Hi, this is Joe. You know, in yoga class, sometimes I hear teachers say things like that we only use a very small percentage of our lungs when we're breathing normally, um, that we don't use our full capacity, and that if we could use that full capacity, if we could breathe in more deeply, we would be able to bring more oxygen into the bloodstream. But is that true? So that's what I'd like to talk about in this video today. First, it is true that if we're breathing quietly, we don't use the full volume of our lungs. The total lung volume is usually said to be about six liters. Um, that's based on your size, so it's based on an average size young man. Um, women typically would have somewhat smaller lung volumes. And when we breathe in, when we're breathing quietly, uh, like you might be doing as you're watching this video, um, we don't use that full volume. We don't completely expand the lungs. Um, we breathe in about a half a liter, 500 milliliters per breath, typically. That's called the tidal volume. So that means that there is a lot of extra volume um, that we could use. Right? At the end of that uh, tidal volume breath, we could fill up almost to the full capacity of the lungs. That's called the inspiratory reserve volume. At the end of a, a normal exhalation, we could breathe out more. That's called the expiratory reserve volume. There's also a little bit of air that's always left in the lungs, even at the end of the deepest exhalation. That's called the residual volume. We never get rid of all of the air in the lungs. Um, but there's a lot of extra space in there that we could fill if we needed to. So it might seem like, well, if I'm not using the full volume of, a, of my lungs, um, that doesn't seem like a good thing, but actually it is a good thing because what it means is you have extra capacity available to you when you need it. Um, if you need more oxygen, you're exercising, um, you have that extra space available. Um, so that means that we have uh, adaptability in, uh, in our breathing mechanism. That's a good thing. Okay, so if we were to breathe in more deeply, would we more fully oxygenate the bloodstream? Um, the answer to that is, if you're healthy, probably not in any, any meaningful way. I mean, maybe a, a small increase, but your blood is almost fully saturated with oxygen as it passes through the lungs, even in a quiet, relaxed, tidal volume breath. Oxygen saturation refers to the amount of oxygen that's um, being carried by the hemoglobin in your red blood cells and hemoglobin has a very, very strong affinity for oxygen, loves oxygen. So when the blood is passing through the tiny capillaries that wrap around the tiny little air sacs called alveoli in your lungs, where the gas exchange takes place, um, the blood becomes pretty much fully saturated in that very short period of time that is passing uh, around the alveoli. Normal blood saturation is considered to be between 95 and 100%, say 97%. If you have lung disease or cardiovascular disease, uh, that may not be true. Your oxygen saturation might be lower than normal. Likewise, if you were to go to a higher altitude, your blood saturation uh, might be lower than normal. But, um, but in, generally speaking, if you're healthy, um, even in quiet breathing, tidal volume breathing, your blood is fully saturated, as saturated as it needs to be uh, in order to provide your body with oxygen. There have been a couple of studies that have looked at blood saturation, oxygen saturation, um, with uh, slow deep breathing in healthy people, and they have found that there is a slight increase in oxygen saturation. As I said, your blood is normally as fully saturated as it needs to be, so that's probably not particularly meaningful or, or um, important, uh, but there is a slight increase in saturation, or appears to be. One hypothesis about why that might be is that when you're breathing in, there's the tubing that takes the air into your lungs. There's the trachea, which branches into two bronchi to take the air into the two lungs. Those branch into smaller and smaller tubes called bronchioles. And every time that you breathe in and you breathe out, you have to fill up and empty that tubing. So not all of the air that you breathe in actually gets into your alveoli where the gas exchange takes place. 
that space that you have to fill up and empty that doesn't get into the alveoli, that's called the dead space. And if you breathe more fully and more deeply, um, you're not really changing the dead space much, which means that there's much more air that's getting into the alveoli per breath, so it can increase the efficiency of your breathing. So that may be why we see that, that very slight increase in saturation with slower, deeper breathing. Is that really meaningful or important? Mm. Probably not, if you're healthy. Your body, your brain, is very good at figuring out uh, how much you need to breathe based on how much oxygen you need, how much carbon dioxide you're producing. Um, so your brain is constantly regulating your breath um, to keep those, um, uh, those blood gases within their normal levels. And in general, I feel like it's usually a good thing to just let your brain do what it already knows how to do. Um, so I don't think that we need to feel like that we need to breathe in more. Um, and in fact, if we do that, we can actually cause problems. Um, uh, hyperventilation can in fact actually have the paradoxical effect of making your hemoglobin hold onto oxygen more strongly, which means that it's less able to release it into your cells. Of course, in yoga, we do some pranayama practices, breathing practices, where we expand the lungs more fully. We also slow the breathing down when we're doing that. But the reason why we do those practices is not about oxygenating the blood more. It's actually about influencing the autonomic nervous system. By slowing the breath down, we can shift the balance on the autonomic nervous system towards the parasympathetic division. That's the rest and digest portion of the autonomic nervous system, the, the part that's, um, that's responsible for the relaxation response. Um, so slow, deep breathing can be a way of helping us de-stress, to move away from a more sympathetic response, a fight or flight response, to a more relaxed state in the nervous system. And that's really the benefit of um, those deeper, slower breathing practices in yoga. So takeaway is um, we don't normally fill up our lungs fully when we're breathing quietly. That's a good thing means we've got excess capacity um, and our blood is pretty much fully oxygenated pretty much all the time as long as we're healthy. Breathing in more deeply or more fully is not going to pull more oxygen in, um, but it can help to shift your nervous system towards a more relaxed state. And that's a good thing. So I hope you found this video helpful. Uh, if you liked it, uh, give it a thumbs up. And um, if you'd like to see more videos about yoga, movement science, anatomy, physiology. I hope you'll subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching.